The Sword of Evil's Bane, the blade that can only be wielded by one who is pure of heart and strong of body, the Master Sword. This iconic blade has been the centerpiece of many Zelda titles, but even so, it has always had many mysteries surrounding it, some of which have finally been answered. For example, in Skyward Sword, we finally found out the origins of the blade, how it actually became the Master Sword, and the history behind it all. But one question has always bothered me. In the world of Zelda, we have all kinds of swords. Some are sturdy, and some simply shatter. So what is the Master Sword actually made of? That is the question we will be exploring today, as we dive into the science of making spiffy swords. So let's start by analyzing what this legendary sword can do. First and foremost, like I said earlier, the Master Sword is the Sword of Evil's Bane, the sword that seals the darkness. For it to hold these titles, it obviously must have a strong spiritual and mystical power that repels bad intentions to the max. It's like what off is to mosquitoes, except it specializes in demonic ones. Kidding aside, its blade is stronger than mere steel, and never seems to tarnish even when left for thousands of years. However, it can be damaged like we see in Breath of the Wild. If it is ever damaged, it can be repaired by placing it in the pedestal that keeps it. Last, but certainly not least, we know from Ocarina of Time that the Master Sword can be used as a bridge between times. If the wielder is not ready, it will hold on to their soul until they are. However, this also grants the wielder the ability to go back upon returning the sword. So now that we have established what the sword can do, let's take a look at its pieces. Although a broadsword like the Master Sword can be broken down into many different parts, we are going to be focusing on its two main structures, the hilt and the blade. Let's start by analyzing the hilt of the sword. In most Zelda games, the hilt of the Master Sword has been depicted as either purple or blue, and in the 3D titles, it seems to have the depiction of the Triforce on it. In Skyward Sword, the game that is chronologically first in the Zelda timeline, we find what may be the material that the hilt was made from. In that game, we can use a sword to travel back in time, to the era before Demise's first attack. This is where we can find the ancient robots built by the gods, to mine the Time Shift Stones. These Time Shift Stones are purplish blue in color, and as seen in the game, have time-altering abilities. According to Hyrule Historia, they are even the material that makes up the time-manipulating Ocarina of Time. If these stones made up the hilt of the Master Sword, it would explain its ability to bridge the gap between times in games like Skyward Sword and Ocarina of Time. But the hilt is only the handle. What of the blade itself? Looking at the blade, we can see it is an ornate broadsword design, with a thick core. Why is that important, though? During the last part of the blade-making process, a sword goes through rapid heating, then rapid cooling, to harden the metal it's made out of. The hotter the temperature, the harder the metal. The cooler the temperature, the tougher the metal. A good broadsword needs a balance between a hard edge and a tough core to perform well under repeated use. The tough core helps resist the shock waves produced when hitting an object, and the hard blade helps cut through armor. This balance of hardness and toughness is managed by the thickness of the blade. Because the center of the blade is thicker than the edges, it has more mass and gains less temperature over time than the thin edges of the blade. This discrepancy allows the blade to be both tough and hard, to stand up to both kinds of stresses, both the impact and the sheer stress a blade must resist in battle. But given how powerful this sword is, and how it is seemingly able to resist almost everything in terms of durability, what kind of material would we be looking at? Writing it off as a magic sword is no fun. If we're here to overthink games, we need something harder and tougher than steel, as well as something that can channel spiritual energy to cut through the darkness, which obviously we can't actually measure. But given the resistant abilities it has, and what we covered already, what kind of metal can that be? Well, we kind of get a tip from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In that game, you upgrade your sword twice, once into the Razor Sword for 100 rupees, and then again into the Gilded Sword for 200 rupees and Gold Dust. The addition of Gold Dust to upgrade your sword is very important as gold is often associated with holding vast spiritual power. If we look across history, it has always carried a substantial value, and often spiritual relics are adorned in it. So from a game perspective, upgrading your sword with it is like giving it a greater ability to store spiritual powers. But what kind of metal actually gets stronger physically when you add gold, a relatively soft metal, to it? The answer is titanium, or in this case, an altered titanium. So hear me out for a second. Titanium is obviously a decently strong metal, but for a sword of the Master Sword's caliber, it'd fall a bit short. However, if you throw some gold into the mix, things change. Titanium gold alloys are actually very strong. Kinda need to know that Nintendo's formula in Majora's Mask wasn't bogus after all. 
Not too long ago in 2016, the hardest titanium alloy was created, and is a 3 to 1 mixture between titanium and gold. This crystalline metal is 4 times harder than pure titanium and 3 times harder than the hardest of steels. However, in order to get the proper crystalline structures to form in the alloy, extremely high temperatures must be used. This high temperature requirement is reminiscent of what takes place in Skyward Sword, where you need to bathe the sword in three sacred flames before it took on its true form as the Master Sword. I imagine that each of these baths helped form the crystalline structure of the final blade. Not just that, but like I mentioned before, the inclusion of gold within the blade could be what holds the key to why the sword has heavy spiritual energy. Given how the ancient technology of the gods was much more advanced than that of other races, it's not so far-fetched to say that they were advanced in metallurgy as well. With robots and even time-controlling devices, they seem to have an edge on even our modern technology of today. But let's rewind for a quick second. We need to talk about how the blade is able to restore itself back to its former glory. Simply calling it a day and saying it's magic doesn't really cut it for me. Given the logic we have in place, we can actually come up with a pretty good theory about how this happens. So let's swing on over to Breath of the Wild, the one game where the Master Sword is not impervious to damage. After the appearance of Calamity Ganon, Link falls defending Princess Zelda, and the Master Sword is badly damaged. After Zelda goes all god mode on the Guardians and gets Link to the Shrine of Resurrection, she places the Master Sword on its pedestal in the Lost Woods, where the Great Deku Tree would watch over it until Link returns. It can be theorized that during this time, the blade was not repaired, but actually rejuvenated, all because of the hilt of the sword. Using the power of the time shift stones in its hilt, it was slowly rewinding time around the blade, to a point before it was damaged. The same can be said when you use the Master Sword to the point it needs recharged. It's just rewinding to a point before it used up its power. This time manipulation also explains why the sword never tarnishes when left for thousands of years as the time shift stones keep the blade in a suspended animation to prevent oxidation. Kinda neat to think that Skyward Sword really laid the groundwork for all of this, despite not fully going into all the greater details. But now that I've said all of that, what do you think? Do you have your own explanation besides just writing it off as a magical sword, about what the sword is made of, and how it functions? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, Thanks for tuning in to this deep dive on strange magic swords. If you're looking for some more Zelda goodness, why not check out how Link's mom was turned into a house in Ocarina of Time, or even how the Sun Song is the deadliest thing ever. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.